You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. You all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Yeah, buddy. Hey there. Hi there. Ho there. It is a beastly day out here in Grammy, in the Grammy Acre Woods, or out here in Grammy Land. And you are listening to Grammy Mary here on my rocket chair on reallibertymedia.com channel 10. Also on the RLM Spreaker channel. And if you are listening in on the Spreaker channel, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static because I don't have good enough internet to be able to chat over on Spreaker and in RLM. And RLM, that's where my peeps are. That's where my peeps are. And it's an oodle lolly, oodle lolly, whack a doodle day today. One week till All Hallows Eve. <laughs> and yeah, I've got a couple of spooky songs for later you know, to intros to my next two shows that'll be coming up. So, yeah, because, well, Halloween, my favorite is holiday ever, because I get to dress up and be whoever I want to be, so long as I have the imagination to dress up like that. Or I don't even have to dress up. I can just pretend, you know, I can identify as. <laughs> and that seems to be all you need to do anymore is just, I identify as. I identify as a mega million dollar winner. That's what I, or maybe just a Powerball winner. Because I don't know, mega million, wow, that's almost $2 billion. That's an awful lot of cha-ching. I don't know, man, but yeah, I could, I could most definitely do the, the Powerball one, yeah, mm-hmm, I could, I could give a lot of that away, because <laughs> you can't take it with you, and you can't spend it all, so you may as well just find some people and just throw it at them, say, have a good time, just don't hurt anybody while you're at it, okay, that, that's my only stipulation, do not go out and cause intentional harm to another human being. So, let's see. Should I say hey? Should I say hi? Should I say ho there? I don't want to say hello because it's hell o. Oh hell. <laughs> oh well. Over here on Twitter, I lost a stalker. Mm, I gained some, I lost some, I gained some, I lost some, but I'm still at 488, so hey! Yay! <laughs> and I see Preston Phillips is sharing a horny toad. Wow, that, it is horny. Well, okay, it's got a lot of horns. We'll just leave it at that, okay? So, hi there over here on Twitter. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. Also, big howdy duty to you, BB9. How are you doing today? Uh, my brother is just sharing all kind of stuff, which, you know, I had all kind of plans for today. I was going to do all kinds of stuff because I didn't have to go into work, so I had other work <laughs> that I was going to do. And my brother called FUD, and we spent two hours on the phone. Holy carp. We talked about just about everything just about everything um well i think about well and it started it's really crazy it started off with steve avery so if any of you have been steve avery netflix did he do it hmm okay but that that was the start of the conversation and then we went from there because i'm not the only one in the family that has squirrel kind of moments so but my brother is sharing all kind of stuff over here oh <laughs> yeah my brother he likes my smart ass remarks uh over here on fakey book basically my brother's the only one that's kind of sort of playing along um let's see can we stop pretending it's possible to live on minimum wage well maybe can we stop pretending it's impossible to get a degree a raise or find a better job well I don't know that I necessarily want to get a degree I mean the temperature has lots of degrees why do I need to go out and get a piece of paper that's you know basically just makes you more qualified to say would you like some fries with that I think that's pretty much what it's boiled down to anymore oh by the way you're going to be in debt up to your eyeballs but hey 
You have a piece of paper now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's Fakey Book. Let me go check out... I checked out Twitter. Let me go to see that realliberty.org, which, by the way, if you ain't over here, come on over, realliberty.org. I'm Grammy or Grammy Mary, however. I think I'm Grammy Mary on here, but, yeah, my thing shows Grammy. And, yeah, and then there's Grimner, and there's Bo, and there's Bobby, and there's Bob Brenner, and there's Flash, and Java, and Cycles, and Rob, Rob Wikes is here, and aunt is here and thank you aunt for all that you do for over here and uh yeah gary l is over here and mary b and cowboy tech there's all kind of people over here on realliberty.org and yeah they share all kind of amazing and awesome stuff brain food art underground is also over here as well as terry hi terry and loki luck and mental pancakes they're not all online right now but hey they're over here we have right now let me look let me scroll let me see site statistics we got 63 members over here sweet it's moving moving on up to the east side or the west side or how about we just kind of move you know get in that stream and just move with it that was another discussion i had with my brother because some people have a tendency you know life is like a stream uh, I know Forrest says it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, which I don't like the jelly-filled ones. But um, I think life is like a stream. And sometimes that stream turns into shit crick. You know, you have a lot of turds floating by, bumping into you, all that fun stuff. But I know an awful lot of people that stand in the middle of that stream and are getting slammed all the time by all these turds. Every turd that's coming down the stream, they're all getting slammed by it. And they stand there and they proclaim to the rest of the stream, life is the shits. Well, sure it is if you're just going to stand there and let the shit hit you all the time. Sure it is. But if you just kind of go with the flow, most of the shit will go around you. And occasionally some will bump into you. Some you might even recognize. You can f- swish them away. But life, yeah. And then there's times when you get into a nice clear area where the stream isn't going quite so fast. And there's no turds anywhere close. You know, and life is really good there. You can just kind of float on your back and have a good time. I know, I have my kitty cat in my lap now. But yeah, life is a stream, peeps. You can either go with the flow or you can stand there and scream at the flow, pounding on you and beating on you all the time. Choice is yours, pretty much. You can either go with it or bitch about it. Either way, you're going to wind up going downstream. Just saying. So... Let me check Twitter. I got another notification. Let me see. Ocelli. Yeah, Chuck Ocelli is on over on reallibertymedia.com as well. And uh, he's on another channel. Chuck. I can't even. Hey, I can't even. How awesome is that? Let me see. Uh, Clinger, not bitter. Oh, thought. okay. Well. There you go. You want to be a clinger, you just be a clinger. People cling, too. There are lots of clingy people. And sometimes they leave smudges on you. Just saying. That's where that whole, this is going to leave a mark kind of thing comes in. In any case, moving along. Where was I at? Mines! Hi there, everybody over here on Mines. I shared something earlier over here on Mines. And, well, you know, I pretty much get ignored over here. Which is okay, because, you know, I just put stuff out there. And and if people want to see it, they'll see it and if they don't want to see it well that's wild t- that's fine too but this is from joseph goebbels actually debt slave shared it on twitter if a lie is big enough and keep repeating it people will eventually come to believe it because the lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political economic and or military consequences of the lie It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its power to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. Yes, Joseph Goebbels, yes it is. 
Hi, everybody over here on Minds. How are you doing? Moving along, moving along. Let's see. I've been to Facebook. I've been to RLO. I've been to Minds. I've been to Twitter. I guess that means I need to get on over to where you need to be if you want to give me some static. Come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Join the chat. Give me some static. I give it back. Because I'm kind of sort of good at that. I see Grim Web Mint is hanging 10, dude, and Cowbunga. Dude. Dude. So, yeah, that's right, Art Underground. Grammy's in the house, and I'm a whack of doodling. <laughs> oh, that sounded kind of pervy, didn't it? Oh, well, over here in the RLM chat, I see Barman right up top. He is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who is always hearing pleasant voices. Cowboy, please don't ever get your hearing checked. I don't care what your lady says. <laughs> That's called selective hearing. Everybody has that. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? Closely followed by the lovely Moose Goyle. Moose Goyle. I like saying it Goyle because it, it, it gives it a flair. Moosey. Moosey is like the female f bominator. She's so awesome. <laughs> I love it when Moose goes on a rant. It's like, oh, oh. Moose has got her knickers in a knot. Look out, world. She's going to kick your ass. <laughs> you go, girlfriend. Kick it. Kick it. My legs ain't that long. I tend to kick my own. Hi, Kate. The lovely Kate down on Florida. Duh. How are you doing, lady? Um. Oh, what? What's that? Oh, much rather have... <laughs> I'm not calling anybody marshmallow birds. I don't like marshmallow bo- birds. Bird. Bird. Um, oh, I'm on your Roku. How cool is that? Java, 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 Dr. Two. How fun. Okay, I'm back to saying, hey, looky there. Art Underground is here, as well as a lovely Chloe and Cycles and another Chloe. We've got a double dip of Chloe. That means multiple personalities are going on. Oh, how awesome is this? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Art. Let's see. Um, I'm moving along. Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by a cyborgian noodle- noodliness. And looky there. D underscore C. And ha ha. Darth Rome's. <laughs> thank you, Rome's. <laughs> Oh, it does my heart good to get to play. <laughs> Thank you for that one, hon. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're so you the bomb. I also see Echelon is here as well as yours truly. And yeah, I'm easily entertained. Vinny, did you hear that? If you're not listening in, I just said easily. I also see I be Don C. I think Vinny's the only per, only other person in the world that's more easily entertained than I am because he's entertained by himself. And so therefore, yeah. <laughs> Vinny, you're such a goof. I also see, yeah, there's Ibi Don C. Meister Brower, it's the Woodman. Hey, Woody, how you doing, hon? Got a double pox going on in the box again. Poxified and poxophone. Also, some Papa Papa Pond sauce in here and the lovely rain, which that's what's falling outside right now. And uh, yeah, it's kind of damp and kind of. Mm. In other words, I took a nap, <laughs> which I did after I got off the phone with my brother. Yeah, I thought, wow, I have strained my brain. I need a nap. <laughs> and so I did. I got about a half hour nap. It was awesome. Naps are wasted on the young. Don't you know? Um. <laughs> Oh, how awesome, Kate. Yay, you got to hear my special sound effects. I spent so much. <laughs> okay, back to saying, hey, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, and Rob Wikes. Hey, Rob Wikes, did you fire up the bubbler, honey? We need some bubbler. I'm, I'm breathing heavy. <sighs> <laughs> wow, that was kind of fun. I may have to record that and play that. Well, okay, it wouldn't do any good because... Yeah, I don't get trick-or-treaters anymore out here in the boonies. It's creepy enough out here at night, let alone, yeah. Moving along. Hi, Skittle, the F-bominator of the bots. Yay, Skittle's so good at dropping F-bombs. Phantom is here, the one and the only. Thank you once again, Phantom, for my 
awesome intro, you to man. Asmo 2 is also here, as well as Colfax 101, who is Nenson Dubois' alter ego. But don't tell anybody I told you that, okay? It's our secret. Frumpy is here. Hi, Frumpy. How you doing? Grim Web Mint is also here. <laughs> that's, that's almost like some kind of funky, you know, chewing gum kind of thing. <laughs> You know that the cheap chewing gum that it loses its flavor really quickly and when you chew on it you get those little gum webs between your teeth. <laughs> That's not just me, is it? <laughs> oh well, whatever. I also see Java 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 Doctor 2 is in the house as well as JJ's 99 JJ's. Hey JJ's, how you doing, sweetheart? How's things over there in Scotland? And looky there, Kozu is also here as well as the one, the only, the sock puppet. I need to make myself a sock puppet. I think that will have to be after Christmas. My um yeah. One of my little things to keep my fingers busy kind of things. Yes. Keep them busy and nimble and keep me from nibbling on, you know, junk food. That kind of stuff. In any case, make a sock puppet. I think I could do that. I think I can. <laughs> oh, well. Moving along. Yeah, distraction, distract. See, I get easily distracted. I said it again, didn't I? And you know what? You know what's another distraction? This This whole people that are marching from Honduras. That's a distraction, people. Did you know that? It is. You know, they're trying to get you whipped into a frenzy, and there's an awful lot of people that are, whip it. Whip it good. You're getting whipped really good, honey. Stop it. That's going to leave a mark, you know? In any case, I, I was checking out some links earlier today, and yeah, saw some of that stuff and it's like oh here's one stunning photo evidence shows caravan migrants carrying u.s aid bags paid for by u.s dollars that's from the deplorablearmy.com which if you wish i can go ahead and put that link but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna read it because it's like distraction watch the bouncing ball look over here pay no attention to that thunk in your back yeah, that's what's going on here. Mm. And Maxine, yeah, how wonderful. Off to the side is a picture of Maxine Waters looking like she's trying to do something really disgusting to a microphone. Oh, and it says there that a bomb was also sent to her office. Well, you know, it's one of those, be careful what you wish for. You know, when you start calling out and telling people that, you know, we'll be civil when we win, you know, or, or you know, you need to blah, 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 because those people are yada, 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 yada. And we need to do violence and you need to confront them in the street and brack and whatever the hell, you know, whatever you're calling for. Sweetheart, when you start that mindset going, you know, when you start getting people in the in the thought process of we need to do something vile and disgusting to the people that we don't agree with because that's what you do guess what you get yeah okay what's that oh super typhoon yutu huh Ooh. wow that's a big badass storm too isn't it thanks darth Romes. okay so i shared that one i'm really not gonna i'm gonna go back to my pocket because i do have one other one that you know lets you know that Breaking news, DHS confirms that there's gang members and other dangerous criminals that are embedded in migrant caravan. This is also from the deplorablearmy.com. And you know, once again, there's Maxine Waters looking like she's trying to give that microphone a blowjob. Oh, did I say that out loud? Wow. I did, didn't I? Yeah, and there's all kinds of images all over the internet of, of you know, they're riding on the back of semis. You know, if they were doing that in the United States, that semi would be pulled over and he'd lose his CDL and everybody would be arrested. And But they're just coming to America. I come to America. Mm -hmm. Come on over, hon. Yeah, whatever. Thank you, Robworks. He fired up the bubbler. Yay. Tiny bubbles. Mwah. I needed some tiny bubbles. <laughs> but yeah, you know, everybody is, everybody's freaking out about this. And it's like, 
Okay, number one, in any kind, in any group, any group that's got minimum of 100 people in it, any group, you're going to have one nasty asshole. Just saying. You're going to have one goody two-shoes. And then somewhere, and then the other 98 people in that group, 98 plus people, are all going to be somewhere in between. So that just lets you know that most of us are somewhere in between. But it's always the goody two-shoes and the flaming asshole that are the ones that get all the attention. The rest of us are going like, will you just shut the hop? Really? Seriously? We're just trying to do our thing. You know? Shut up already. But no. And so, yeah, DHS confirms there's gang members and other dangerous criminals. Yeah. No shit. No shit. Uh, distraction. And yes, I just gave it. It's 15, 20, 30 seconds of... There you have it. So... What I think some of these things are distracting you from. Number one, let's go, let's go with this one just to kind of get it out there. Shall we? I think we will. What, 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 what? Okay, who's making noise? I don't have a... Who's making noise? Stop it. Okay. Which one of my stories is doing that shut up not that one not that one who is screaming at me oh I hate when this happens there it is there it is shut oh it's an Antifa video okay you Antifa assholios shut up now this is from the dailymail.com and you know for these anti-fascists I always have this saying, be careful that you don't become worse than the monster you purport to be fighting against. Sweetheart, you Antifa protesters, oh, wow, you are the monster. I know you don't want to hear that, but yes, you are. Now, apparently this Antifa protester is fired from his job after being filmed harassing a 9-11 widow and saying her dead NYPD husband deserved to rot in, his, in the grave. Well, honey, wow, harsh, just a little. And, mm, you know, get what you give. You put that vibe out and it's going to come back at you. Don't be surprised by it. Well, apparently this one was filmed harassing this woman who is claiming to be a widow of a New York City cop killed on 9-11. And uh, that individual has been identified by the charity he worked for in a scathing statement announcing his firing. Steve Wilson was caught on camera cursing at the woman and telling her that her husband deserved to rot in the grave at the Patriot Prayer protest in Portland, Oregon. Why does it not surprise me that this happened in Oregon? Mmm... He started by calling her an, okay, it's got an F and an awful lot of asterisks. <laughs> snarky little idiot, which does he know she's snarky? Because snarky is a label that one must earn. I have earned the snark label, and I, I polish it up every day. But um, he was calling her that because she was standing in front of him, and he thought that she was blocking him from walking across the street. Oh, Heaven forbid that you should have to step to the side and then possibly say, excuse me, and then walk across the street. Egad, it's not fair when you get put out like that. Apparently when the woman told him that her husband died on 9-11, he said good for him. And he carried on his tirade afterwards, labeling all NYPD cops as sodomizing F asterisks immigrants and saying your f asterisks husband should probably or yeah should probably should f asterisk rot in a grave you know asterisks is really kind of not easy to say when you guys say it a lot in any case the woman has not been publicly named but Oregon Live reports that she may not be the NYPD widow and that there is no proof that she was ever married to anyone who died in 9-11. Okay, so you got a liar and a liar. 
okay, you got a liar and an and a fascist that says he's against fascism, but he's still a fascist. So, or maybe he's just a asshole. Uh, the newspaper did not name her, but said that they found no record of her ever living on the East Coast, much less being married to anyone who died on 9-11. Okay, so she was maybe milking a little sympathy, does not excuse his behavior. So as the video spread online last week, Wilson's identity remained a mystery. But a professional skateboarder who bears a striking resemblance to him was wrongly named as the person in the video, and he had to fight to clear his name, which that's one of the bad sides of things going viral on the Internet, is, you know, people get falsely acclaimed, uh, falsely accused. You know, like, how many Brett Kavanaugh's are out there? And how many of them have had to deal with the shit? Because of all of the shit that went down over those confirmation hearings and the, he sexually assaulted me. I don't remember when exactly, and I don't remember where, and I don't remember who I was with, but he did it. I know he did. Really? Haven't heard from her, have you? That's because she's outlived her usefulness. It's the way that shit works, too. Now, on Tuesday... Self-Enhancement, Inc., which is a non-profit organization supporting African-American youths, you know, the hyphenated people that stayed in the Easy Bake Oven of Life a little bit longer than the rest of, well, than I did, they, uh, they confirmed it was Wilson by announcing he had been fired over it. Oh, darn it all. I hate when consequences to your behavior come up and smack you right in the face. Steve is no longer an employee of SEI. His behavior does not represent the values of our organization or the high expectations we have for our employees. This is what the company said in its Twitter statement. Now the video shows Wilson curse at the woman as she stood in front of him at a traffic crossing. Okay, she does have big bada bing bada booms. And if she turned too fast, she could hurt someone. So, you're going to block me now? You're a F... Asterix's snarky little idiot. Shut the F asterix ups. Okay. Wow. Okay. And she said she was merely obeying the traffic signal and goaded him with try something, B asterixes, when he started to curse at her. Oh, sweetheart. No, seriously. If she puts those bada bing bada booms behind a swing, dude, you're dead. <laughs> Don't mess with that woman. Man, she's got pecs <laughs> wow so he shot back i'm not i'm not going to punch you i'm not like your husband i'm not going to hit you oh wow well so all of a sudden all already okay he started with the the but wow wow apparently <clears throat> without missing a beat he carried on with i'm not like your effing cop boyfriend who's going to knock you out Really? So do you know this guy? Apparently not. The woman then turned around, pointed to her NYPD hat, and said, my husband died in 9-11. Okay. To which Wilson, completely unperturbed by her remark, carried on. Good for him. Good. Okay. Be a snark ass. D go for it. If you want to wear it, honey. As they crossed the street, his abuse continued. Oh, so he couldn't just go ahead and cross the street. He had to walk with her. And berate her all the way across. Well, you know, honey, that's what you get. You know, you, you keep this shit up. You want to pick a fight, have a verbal tete-a-tete. -tete. Don't be surprised if you have a little comeback on it. Just saying. So, at first, Charlie Wilkins, who bears a striking resemblance to Wilson, was publicly mistaken for him. And he spoke out to insist it was not him in the video and that he was appalled by it. Now, Wilson did not respond to the DailyMail.com's inquiries on Tuesday morning. So, apparently, he is not hanging his head in shame. He's going to go out and let everybody know that that's just not very fail. How could you pick on me? Yeah, I said that, but that's not very fail. How could you do that? That's so mean. So, you know, in this... I am so, 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 ever so glad that growing up, we did not have cell phones. 
And, uh, you know, if you had cameras, you had to send the film in unless you had a Polaroid. But, you know, we didn't have all of this stuff to where you could just go viral. And that's a blessing because I've gotten into a few verbal tete-a-tetes in my day. I know that shocks you, but it has happened. And there were a few times where I was on the losing end as well. And uh, I know that shocks you too, doesn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. But it happened, which is how I have honed my skills. (laughs) And yeah, I still on occasion have been known to lose a verbal tete-a-tete, but that's okay. That's okay. I lick my little mental wounds and then I walk away. It's all good. But man, oh man, you know, these these people that think it's just peach kino, you know, like Shitlery and uh, Maxine Waters and Barbara Boxer and anyone else who goes out there and says, I think we should do violence upon them. And I have to say, at one point in my life, I was one of them. But I think we should go do violence upon them because they think different. They do different things. Oh, sure, we do things, too, that are very, 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 very similar to what they're doing. But there are things and not their things. And our things are good and their things are shit. Sneeches on the beaches kind of thing. Read Dr. Seuss. You learn all kinds of little life lessons with Dr. Seuss. Trust me. Or not. But, you know, these people that go out there and they do all this stuff, they stir all this shit, and then then they get pissed off because you make them lick the spoon. It's like, honey, you stirred the shit pot. That's part of it. Did you not grow up in a household when you stirred the pot, you got to lick the spoon? <laughs> Guess what? That works whether it's tasty or not. So start licking, honey, and deal. I know adulting is hard, but that that's just one of the things about being an adult that you just have to learn to deal with. And hopefully you will learn to not start quite so much crap later. Or learn to back up what you're slinging. One or the other. But yeah, deal with, deal with or expect repercussions because there always are sometimes those repercussions are rewards and sometimes they're not so okay let's see I'll just do that I'm sharing it over on realliberty.org by the way so um and it's thinking it's thinking it's thinking and while it's thinking i'm going to come back over here to my pocket because i have some other stuff that i want to get to that is not quite so Mm. now uh here's another one that you know if you really want to you want to get up in arms about the state or the government Or any of that other fun stuff. Here's something that, you know, they're probably trying to distract you from. Because they don't want you to notice that, yeah, this is going on all over the place. It's from the freethoughtproject.com. I don't remember who posted it, but I swiped it. I swiped it. It's uh, brothers face $450,000 in fines for cutting trees on their own property without asking the nanny state government first. Please, sir, is it okay to cut down trees to make my own toilet paper? No, because you won't give yourself enough slivers in your ass. That's why. That's, That's about the way the mentality works with that kind of shit. I know, I'm being a snark. I wear it well. So, apparently these, uh, removing some invasive trees on their own property, yeah, it's going to cost them about half a million dollars because they didn't ask the state for permission first. Well, you know what, honey, if I win, if I'm the big winner of Mega Million, did it go out yesterday? I don't pay attention. If I win Powerball tonight, I'll just pay your fine and tell the government, hey, They have a right to make their own toilet paper. Dude. That was another discussion my brother and I had. We did weed everywhere. I said, how is it that somebody else can have a right that I don't have? 
you know, like these law enforcement people. They have a right to do all kinds of stuff, but I can't do that. Don't tell me it's that damn shiny badge. That badge don't mean shit. Unless it's a snark badge. Moving along. Apparently in Canton Township, M-I, M-I, is that Michigan or meaner sold? No, that's Michigan, right? Yeah, I think that's Michigan. Apparently in the land of the free, you must ask permission from the government before you modify your own property. Well, yeah, it's called building permits out re this neck of the woods. But since I live somewhere that's unincorporated, I don't have to do that. <laughs> Yay. So <clears throat> if you do not ask for permission and pay them, you can face heavy fines and or imprisonment. So ask permission and pay them, which is protection money, or pay heavy fines, which is extortion. There is a fine line between those two, but yeah. Apparently, these two brothers in Michigan, hey, I was right, are learning this the hard way after cutting down trees on their own property. And now the state is telling them to pay up a half a million dollars because the state is having a budget shortfall, obviously, and you guys need to pay for that. Apparently, Gary and Matt Percy have been told by their local rulers, <clears throat> the leeches that be, that because they failed to obtain the proper permit before cutting down 1,400 trees on their own property, that they now owe $225 to $450 per tree. They're, they're probably giving that range because, well, bigger trees are worth more. Now, apparently, the brothers own a 16-acre plot of land that they cleared in preparation for planting a Christmas tree farm. That's according to their attorney, Michael J. Patwell. But they didn't ask the government for permission first, so now they must pay up. The Canton Tree Police showed up, said Patwell, and Canton Township's tree removal ordinance prohibits landowners from removing trees from private property without government permission. Yada, 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 blada, blada, blada. Ordinance. Really? Look up what an ordinance really means. I'm not doing your homework for you. You're going to have to do some of this yourself. I was on city council for four years. I've done my penance. Now, this may be obtained by either payment into the township so-called tree fund or on-site replacement with trees of certain designated trunk diameters. Oh, so, we have this of making you comply. So what's more, the property was full of invasive plants and not really trees. The land was filled with in invasive plants like Farg mites, buckthorn, and autumn olive. I'm going to have to look those up later. But the government disagrees. And to assess the fines, local officials had their expert arborist survey a nearby property which they claim had similar trees. Well, it was the same thing, only different. It was close, but not there. See how they work that shit? Apparently, they identified certain plots, the township attorney Kristen Kolb said, and they identified the number or type of trees and did some math to figure out approximately how many trees. In other words, we fudged some numbers because, well, we've been following this whole climate change thing and we saw how well that hockey stick worked and we thought, let's try that ourselves. Okay. According to M Live, the arborist estimated 1,385 trees with trunk diameter of six inches or more were removed. Six inches or more, honey. Oh my God! You know, um, that's why women are not really good with uh, judging distances or you know size comparison or anything. Because well, there's not. I don't have a visual to give you because I don't do video. But yeah, women have always been told that this was six inches. So, <laughs> <laughs> honey, maybe you need to get a tape measure out. Oh wait, you estimated. You guesstimated. Let's put it like that. That could mean two hundred twenty-five to three hundred dollars per tree in penalties. And another one hundred landmark trees were also removed. The township guesstimated 
meaning another $450 each. In other words, oh my God, we have a calculator and we are looking at somebody else's property and we are going cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. By the way, you're paying for what we see on someone else's property, but that's okay because we want the money, honey. According to the brother's attorney, however, the Gooperman uses a broad set of terms to define tree, which makes just about anything fit the definition, even invasive brush and dead trees. Now, the Canton Township defines trees as any wooden plant with at least one well-defined stem and having a minimum diameter at breast height of three inches. Okay, whose breast height and once again we've been told that all our lives that this is six inches <laughs> i could shoot holes in this like crazy and have a good time with it now the percy parcel was used historically by a local farmer for dairy pasture so much of the vegetation on the parcel was invasive buckthorn, scrub brush, and dead ash trees. And according to M. Live, Patterson also points out an exemption in the township ordinance, which states all agricultural-slash-farming operations, commercial-slash-nursery tree farm operations, and occupied lots of less than two acres in size, including utility companies and public tree trimming agencies, shall be exempt from all permit requirements of this article. So there are exemptions, but they don't apply here. Because we said so. And we write the rules. Now, based on the aforementioned ordinance, the brothers were clearly within the law. But this is irrelevant to the officials who want the money. Show me the money, honey. Yeah. And the Percy brothers believed that they were exercising a state and local exemption for farming when they cleared the land. But city officials arrived on site and signaled immediately their intention to levy big fines in excess of $700,000. Wait a minute. It went from what to what? Wow, that's, that's, that's just a skosh over half a mil. Apparently, that's not what this case is about. We're talking here about a parcel of former pasture land surrounded entirely by industrial activity. Now, this case is about misguided overreach. It's, it is unavoidably about whether people who own property are allowed to use it. We contend that the Percy brothers exercised a farming exemption in a local tree removal law to clear the historic pasture behind their business and develop a Christmas tree farm. It is not a law. It is an ordinance. There is a difference. Now, even if the brothers weren't protected under local exemption, the idea that government officials can, can and will levy fines against a person in the land of the free for cutting down trees on their own property without first paying the government fee is tyrannical. And yeah, it is. Cutting down the trees posted or posed no threat to wildlife, no threat to neighboring property owners, and was in the best interest of the brothers. However, because they failed to pay the state and ask for permission, they will now be extorted. Rest assured, if they refuse to pay this extortion fee, state agents, likely armed with AR-15s, will come to their home and kidnap them. And if they resist these armed men attempting to kidnap them, they will be killed. Because, well, this is the land of the free. And you're, you're free to die if, if you don't comply. Yeah, I'm a poet. I know it. And that wasn't a very funny poem, but it was the truth. Wow. Captain Assholios. All because they want your money, honey. Well, trick or treat, smell my feet. What's that? Uh, what's this? Sarah Carter reveals unreported truth about the migrant caravan. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh. Oh, sweet. Oh, by the way, Rob Works, that was awesome bringing your friend over, hun. Donna, is that her name? So awesome sauce. It's so nice to see our family grow. Uh, actually, Grim, it's the land of the fee. Get that R out of there. But, mm -hmm. yes, they're having a good time, aren't they? Oh, well. <clears throat> now, that's one of those lovely little things. They don't want you to notice they as in you know, corporate lame ass propaganda system and the leeches that be don't want you to notice that they are really stepping out of bounds. How can they do something that you don't have a right to do? Because they have an ordinance, they have some squiggles on paper that says that they can do that. Wow. All righty. You're a special kind of stupid, ain't you? Just saying. Yeah. So, let me go back to my pocket. Cause, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Now, that's one. Here's another one where, oh darn, oh darn, that uh, most definitely, you know, the courts can be this way, the courts can be that way, but... Mm -hmm. According to the LibertyBeacon.com, Bayer loses appeal over historic Roundup cancer lawsuit. Ta 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 ta. The, for those of you that don't know, there was there was a really big corporation during Nazi Germany times that uh, basically the Allies broke them up in broke it up into three different companies, and it has slowly over the years remerged itself. Bayer. Bayer. Yeah, look it up. So, having successfully closed on its $66 billion purchase of the agrochemical company Monsanto in June, we suspect that Germany's Bayer AG is more than a little concerned now after failing to persuade a judge to set aside a jury's $289 million verdict in the first trial over allegations that its Roundup weed killer causes cancer. Now, as a reminder, in August, a San Francisco jury awarded $289 million in damages to former school groundskeeper Dwayne Johnson, who said Monsanto's Roundup weed killer gave him terminal cancer. Now, the award consists of $40 million in compensatory damages and $250 million in punitive damages. Johnson's trial was fast-tracked due to the severe state of his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a cancer of the lymph system he says was triggered by Roundup and Ranger Pro, which is a similar glyphosate herbicide that he applied up to 30 times per year. And his doctors didn't think he'd lived to see the verdict. Now, Johnson testified that he had been involved in two accidents during his work in which he was doused with the product, the first of which happened in 2012, and two years later, the 46-year-old father of two was diagnosed with lymphoma, which has covered as much as 80% of his body with lesions. Now, Monsanto said that it would appeal the verdict, you know, today's decision does not change the fact that more than 800 scientific studies and reviews and conclusions by the U.S. Env Environmental Protection Agency, the U.S. National Institutes of Health, and regulatory authorities around the world support the fact that glyphosate does not cause cancer and did not cause Mr. Johnson's cancer. That's from Monsanto's Vice President Scott pa uh, Partridge in his released statement. Yeah. Both of the, or all of those agencies and all of those scientific studies, huh, they're pretty much funded by Monsanto. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. Well, appeal they did, and today, today the verdict came down, or actually yesterday it came down. Now, the San Francisco Superior Court judge, Susan Bolanos, had suggested in an initial written ruling that the, um, this month that she was considering granting a new trial. 
but her final ruling today largely sided with Dwayne Lee Johnson denying Monsanto's request to overturn the verdict. As Bloomberg reports, a California state judge rejected Bayer's arguments that the jury didn't have any basis to conclude that the herbicide caused an ex-school groundskeeper's cancer. However, she has ruled to reduce punitive damages from $250 million to $39 million, noting in her ruling Monday that if Johnson did not accept the lower punitive damages, she would order a new trial for Monsanto. Apparently, the punitive damages award must be con constitutionally reduced to the maximum allowed by due process in this case, which is $39,253,209.35, which is equal to the amount of compensatory damages awarded by the jury based on the findings of harm to the plaintiff. Now, in a recent interview, Johnson told The Guardian that he wanted to see his case have a long-term impact including new restrictions and labeling for the herbicide. I think it just needs to go bye-bye. But, no, that's not just me. But it does set a precedent. And that is the biggest point here. I hope Monsanto gets the message that people in America and across the world are not ignorant. And they have already done their own research. And he added, I'm hoping that it snowballs and people really get the picture and they start to make decisions about what they eat and what they spray in their farms. Now this ru ruling opens Bayer, excuse me, to considerably higher damages as thousands of plaintiffs across the country have made similar legal claims, alleging that glyphosate exposure caused their cancer or resulted in the deaths of their loved ones. And glyphosate is just, just nasty stuff. And if you look at scientific findings, which once again, scientific findings, you have to look at how, how they, um, no, it's not a rerun, Frumpy. How they gathered their evidence, what questions they asked, how they compiled the numbers because every single person that looks at a bunch of data will see something different. Because when you have that much data, you have to start narrowing it down in order to try and make some sense out of it. Thank you, Brother Fudd, for that one. Which, yeah, makes sense. And, you know, every kind of scientific study that's out there, they are out there to either prove or disprove something. So it's already got a bias to it. Even before they start, they have already affected the outcome of whatever study they're doing. It's just the way it works. But glyphosate is bad juju. And I can tell you, Van Meter just joined us. Yay! Hi, Donna. Welcome aboard. I know she's probably not listening yet, but hey, welcome aboard, sweetheart. Um... What was I saying? Oh, okay. Out here in farm country, I know an awful lot of farmers that are getting away from Roundup, getting away from um, all of the uh, all the nasty, nasty stuff. And there's an awful lot of my farmer friend uh, has been telling me because he's been out harvesting corn lately um, that um, he's seeing more and more fields that are saying not herbicide tolerant. So it is not GMO corn. There's an awful lot of farmers out here that are no longer planting that stuff. So. Oh, maybe it is a Mandela effect, Frumpy. I don't know. It could be. It, if such a thing could be, it would be. Afternoon salutations to you too, Van Meter. Welcome aboard, dear lady. Okay, let me put this over here on realliberty.org as well. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I think this is awesome. Just, I feel bad for this gentleman. Because, yeah, cancer is ugly. 
and it does some nasty, nasty stuff. And it doesn't make a damn bit of difference how well you eat and all that other fun stuff. Sometimes you have external influences that will, F-bomb alert, fuck you up. So, and this is one of those cases. I just keep seeing all of these pictures with these people in the big old honking hazmat suits and they're out there spraying crops. And I think, if you have to dress up like a space guy to spray this shit on the food, what makes you think I want to eat that crap after you've sprayed that on there? Yuck. You know, the, the worst stuff I use around here is vinegar, salt, and Dawn dish soap. Mix that together and I spray it on the, on the bindweed. Because the other stuff uh, I can pull, but bindweed, good God, those roots go all the way down to Bayer. I mean, hell. <laughs> Same thing, only different. So, okay. Bam. Bada bing, bada boom. I think Monsanto needs to go bye-bye. I think Bayer needs to go bye-bye. And here's another thing that Definitely, because this is really getting, it's getting rolled out everywhere across, um, across the United States, in the UK, everywhere. And in case you think, because there's a, um, well, I've got two articles, one from the libertybeacon.com about the 5G rollout and countless studies showing 5G frequencies cause illness. And here's one from CNET.com. If it will wake up. There it is. I'm pulling it up out of my pocket. Digging in my pocket. Got to move the little lint balls every once in a while. You know, cybernetic lint balls can be a bugger from time to time. So... According to CG, uh, CNET.com, with 5G, you won't just be watching video. It'll be watching you, too. <laughs> See, it is Halloween time. Coming up on the spooktacular trick or treat. Yeah, well, this is a... Oh, come on. Do your thing, CNET. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's taken forever. So... Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. So apparently, uh, what happens when you when movies can direct themselves? Ooh, oh, that's just not right. So <clears throat> the re remember the last time that you felt terrified during a horror movie? You know, you hear that freaky deaky music, or you start hearing weird sounds, and what's the first thing you do? Okay, everybody in the damn movies, they go and they open the damn door. What the hell? If you hear the freaky music, grab a weapon and run away. Do not open the door, especially not the door that the music's coming from. Because that's where the boogeyman's at. Uh, everybody knows that. So, take that moment now. And all the suspense leading up to it. And imagine it individually calibrated for you. Yeah, it's a terror plot morphing in real time, adjusting the story to your level of attention to lull you into a comfort zone before unleashing a personally timed jump scare. Yeah, how do they do that? Well, they're using you as an antenna too because that's what 5G does. Or... Maybe being scared witless isn't your idea of fun. Well, not necessarily for me because, you know, first I say it, then I do it kind of thing. But <clears throat> think of the rom-com that stops from going off the rails when it sees that you're rolling your eyes. Or maybe it tweaks the eye color of that character, finally finding true love so it's closer to your own. A personalized subtlety. To make the love-struck protagonist more relatable. Well, you can thank or curse 5G for that. Which, by the way, those of you that are thinking, Oh, we've got to have 5G because it'll make things so much faster. And I'm so impatient. My attention span is 2.3 seconds. Guess what, honey? You're really not going to notice the difference. And I think they're prepping. Okay, I'm stepping. Squirrel. Rant time. 
I think that they're making cell phone reception shittier and internet shittier so that people will come crawling and begging for 5G because it's supposed to be so much better. No, no. Kiss of my ass. I would just as soon do without as to have your nasty shit. Okay? Now back to this article. So, when most people think of 5G, they're envisioning an ultra-fast, high-band connection that lets you download seasons of your favorite show in minutes. Because, by God, if I don't get that whole season in under 2.3 seconds, I'm just going to die. Well, okay, you're just going to die anyway, honey. It happens to everything. But, 5G's possibility go way beyond that. Potentially reinventing how we watch video and opening up a mess of privacy uncertainties. See, they're just worried about the privacy shit. I'm worried about the health. Like all of us dropping like flies. Like 5G is just a human-sized bug zapper. They're spraying us already with RAID up in the sky, and now they've got the bug zapper as an extra kicker for those of us that ain't dropping from the RAID. Mm. So, what? Okay. Stop it. Stop it. So, right now, you make a video with much the same way that you did for TV. Dan Garraway, who is co-founder of interactive video company Wirewax, he said this in an interview this month. But the dramatic thing is when you turn video into two-way conversation. Your audience is touching and interacting inside the experience and making things happen as a result. In other words, they're giving you the next level of virtual reality as if we're not already living in a virtual reality. Here we go with the next level. So even as you're trying to escape from the virtual reality, you're escaping into another virtual. It's like those forever mirrors, you know, the farther you look, the more you, it's, you just keep getting weenier and weenier and inkier and dinkier until there's nothing left of you. Apparently a personalized horror flick or a tailored rom-com. Well, no, thank you. They would hinge on interactive video layers that use emotional analysis based on your phone's front-facing camera to adjust what you're watching in real time. Oh, booyah, bonus round. I don't do that shit with my phone. My phone is for phoning and texting with my kids basically, and my grandkids. So, you may think it's far-fetched, but one of the key traits of 5G is an ultra-responsive connection with virtually no lag, meaning that the network and system would be fast enough to react to your physical responses. In other words, it's also capable of controlling your responses because it moves as fast as the synapses in your brain. Kind of scary thought, ain't it? 5G is on the cusp of reality, with the first compatible smartphones set to debut next year. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to have one of those pieces of shit. And while these forms of media don't even exist yet, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, the potential for them is huge. That's according to one estimate. 5G will propel annual revenue. <gasps> Cha-ching! from immersive and new media applications from 0 to 67 b -b 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 billion within a decade. That's what you are. You are a revenue generating source. Period. They could care less if you kick the bucket because no worries, they'll make more and those will be mindless. Now, for context, that matches the value of an entire mobile market, mar media market. You know, like video, music, and games last year. Overall, Ovum and Intel predict 5G will be more than triple the mobile media market worldwide, reaching $420 billion in 2028. That's from $170 billion this year. But it's a generational leap. So before you cast a skeptical eye at 5G, consider how the last explosion of mobile connectivity from 3G to 4G LTE changed how we consumed video. It was not an upgrade, peeps. Trust me, it was not. Being able to watch 
and in YouTube's case, upload video on your mobile device, reimagined how we watch TV and the types of programming that are big business. Once again, follow the cha-ching. A decade ago, when Netflix was about two years old, or two years into its transition to streaming from DVD mailings to its annual revenue of $1.4 billion, this year it's on track for more than 10 times that, $15.806 billion. Now, the widespread availability of 4G enabled a massive improvement in distribution of video, said Jim Spare, who is the chief operating officer of interactive video company Echo. And with 5G, new forms of me uh, video media entirely can be delivered into a mobile setting and fry your brain, literally. Let's say yay or not. So... 5G's potential for video is based in several major changes on how video is distributed and created. The biggest are 5G's low latency, or the lag time between when you call up a page and when the network responds. Unless you live in the boonies and it's gotten a hell of a lot shittier because they're wanting to roll out 5G. And they're wanting you to come crawling and saying, please, my internet sucks. My cell phone reception sucks. Guess I'll have to get rid of both of them. And you can just kiss my money goodbye. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the lag time with 4G is about 20 milliseconds. But with 5G, it's cut down to as little as one millisecond. We're talking milliseconds here, peeps. Milliseconds. You know, less time it takes to blink an eye. Is your attention span seriously that short? If it is, go out in some nature for a while, okay? Get your attention span back. Because this is redunculous. Oh, but the technology is also better at handling huge amounts of data. Yeah, because it's going to download your mind into your device and then they're going to fuck it up. Okay, I'm making that shit up, but <laughs> seriously, do you really think that's all that far off? Hello? Yes, my tinfoil hat is just a skosh snug tonight. Yeah, video is already one of the most data-heavy activities online. It's almost 58% of the downstream traffic on the internet this year. That's according to Sandvine. And 5G not only lightens that load, but it can also make new kinds of video accessible. La 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 la. One simple application is like DVD extras on steroids. Oh, and we all know steroids shrink the jewels. They're bad juju. Now, Garraway gave the example of Jurassic World, which was a blockbuster with hundreds of digital assets that never made it into the final cut of the film. Gee, I wouldn't know because I didn't watch it. Crane rigs, <clears throat> excuse me, crane rigs that captured sweeping shots over the park, for example, also had 360 degree cameras attached underneath, but hardly any of those assets were seen. Okay, big whoop. There's such a thing as too much input. Fries the brain. Oh, wait, that's what they're trying to do. Never mind. Now, an interactive movie means that you could relive that footage in the time that you're watching the movie. Switching cameras on the fly. Yay! The speed and capacity of 5G also makes it possible for video to be created in real time according to your responses. As films and shows are increasingly computer generated, characters become malleable. What was that? What was that movie? Sandra Day, or not Sandra Day, uh, Susan Day and Albert Finney? No, not Al Maybe it was Albert Finney. Looker. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. We're in the age of Looker. You know what? I'm going to let you guys finish reading this because, wow, CNET, you just really dushed in my estimation with this one. Totally and completely. Oh, uh, yeah, let's keep saying that 5G is wonderful, okay? Yeah, it is not. Oy. 
let's get to yeah 5g is not a, a good thing it is not a pretty thing it is not going to be a good thing there's all kind of people that are already saying there's all kind of bad stuff coming about because of 5g but yeah look at this you can change the movies on the fly watch it on your phone step out into traffic talk about population control <laughs> that's pretty much what it is population control in more ways than one because you got to cover your all angles that's how the leeches that be do it they think ahead and they cover lots of angles Okay. Now that I've got this over on realliberty.org, I am going to go to my other 5G article. Because, you know, CNET stepped into the fray to tell you how wonderful it is, how amazing it is, how cool it's going to be for you to make every movie experience experience more personalized as if movies don't suck bad enough the way it is if it's not a retread it's uh, i really haven't seen a decent movie in quite a while just because i start seeing like build-ups to it and i go wow that looks like it's total suckage the only one i really want to see right now is the one that they're coming out with about queen that Freddie Mercury and Queen thing. That does look interesting, but that's just basically because of the music, because I like Queen. So, this is from the LibertyBeacon.com. It was posted yesterday. Oh, I'm getting a little warm. Huh, I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> oh. 5G rollout and countless studies that show 5G frequencies cause illness. Got 180 scientists and doctors that call for a moratorium on 5G. <clears throat> yeah, this is by Markab Al-Jidi. Al 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 Thanks, Mark. <laughs> I'll just cut it down. Apparently, 5G wireless ser or wireless service has just been launched by Verizon in the first four cities on the planet. Sacramento, California, Houston, Texas, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Los Angeles, California. Yeah. And Verizon launched it on October 1st, offering free 5G to users for three months. Oh, see, here we go. It's free. Basically, because we want you to be guinea pigs so we can see how short you live. Sacramento's 5G saturated locations are visible on a map that they have included in this article in uh, light red circular patches. And yeah, freaking saturated. Say goodbye to Sa uh, Sacramento. Now, soon dozens of other American cities will be saturated with 5G frequencies when AT&T launches its network. Thanks, assholios. The AT&T network, also set to launch in late 2018, will happen in 23 metropolitan areas, many of them in the south. So, Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Boston, Massachusetts, Fresno, California, Buffalo, New York, Chicago, Illinois, Greenville, South Carolina, Houston, Texas, again! Indianapolis, Indiana, again. Los Angeles, California, again. Sacramento, California, again. Why? Because they haven't covered the whole area yet, so you need to hit them from several angles. San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Hartford, Connecticut, San Antonio, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Louisville, uh, Memphis, and Nashville, Tennessee, Oklahoma City, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Just to name a few. So, here's some basic info to know about exactly what 5G is. As 5G is rolled out, the cell towers that we normally see are going to be replaced with smaller cells, closer to our heads, on public buildings, and short poles, emitting higher frequencies than the current cell towers.
And these little cells will be on poles everywhere if people allow this to come to fruition. Now these small white seemingly plastic encased cells emitting higher frequencies closer to our heads are being spotted now on streets in these cities. Current 4G Wi-Fi operates generally under 1 gigahertz. 5G runs on millimeter waves. It's a spectrum of frequency much higher and it will be on millimeter length wavelengths between 30 and 300 gigahertz. Now Verizon's current four city deployment of 5G runs between 28 and 39 gigahertz. That's according to them. And the thing about 5G is different carriers are going to run their 5G on different frequency bands and they will rise in frequency until our Wi-Fi, our phones, and computers suddenly run on frequencies as high as 60 gigahertz. So when 5G reaches 60 gigahertz frequencies, it's believed that this will really, really cause people health problems. Wi-Fi usually below 1 gigahertz is already known to cause a litany of health problems, and it's thought to be linked to the in infertility crisis currently hitting America and countries all over the world. I think it's just the part of the one-two punch. First we add the vaccines, then we bring in the gigahertz. Plus, well, you know, and then there's the sucker pen punch of the chemtrails with all those lovely little nanoparticles that we're breathing in. And yeah, all of these frequencies are going to activate that. Oh, there I go with that tinfoil hat getting a little snug again. Mm-hmm. Now, Wi-Fi is connected to cancer, infertility, birth defects, sleep disorders, memory problems, cardiovascular disease, infertility again, and more. And that's a whole other body of research. But this article is obviously written from the perspective that our health is no sacrifice for the ability to have internet that is faster. And your internet really won't be noticeably faster for you. Maybe for your electronic device, but not necessarily for you because your brain just, yeah, you've already got too much shit going on in there. Your brain ain't running that fast. Now, for all the people who may suffer from health problems and their families right now, they're being saturated with the frequencies. This article uh, series from Edge Canopy is going to put the research in one place with solid sources. So to begin examining potential health problems from 5G, firefighters in San Francisco exposed to early trials of it experienced health problems. Even local news articles from Sacramento admitted it could cause health problems. Now, Sacramento will be the first city in the country to get 5G cell tower or cell service later this summer, but health concerns are now being raised about the equipment. 5G uses high-frequency waves and is supposed to be 100 times faster than the current cell phone service. However, the 5G waves don't travel as far as current wireless frequencies. So instead of large cell phone tower equipment spread far apart, 5G requires smaller cell sites closer together. And firefighters in San Francisco have reported memory problems and confusion after the 5G equipment was installed outside the fire station. Just what you want when someone's coming to put out the fire at your house. And the firefighters claim that the symptoms stopped when they relocated to stations without equipment nearby. Huh. Now, people suspect the 5G frequencies will cause problems having to do with oxygen. And it was said by Joe Imbran Imbriano, who is an activist and researcher from Fullerton, California, that when 5G reaches the frequency band of 60 gigahertz, the ability for a person's blood hemoglobin to bind with oxygen will be damaged. In other words, you'll suffocate. Now, researching his claims, they started to add up, although it's difficult to confirm the thing about oxygen and hemoglobin. But this, uh, there is an article here that's linked that from an accredited website about radio frequencies called Everything RF. 
and is titled, Why is 60 GHz Band Not Good for Long-Range Communications? It reports that oxygen does in fact absorb 60 GHz frequencies at an extreme level, representing a spike of absorption ability. And when you see how different frequencies on the millimeter spectrum interact with oxygen, yeah. However, and there is a graph here, the graph is talking about high altitudes in the atmosphere, so one could assume that 5G interacts with oxygen in similar ways at our altitude. Yeah. So, Joe Imbriano was correct to say that 60 gigahertz 5G will be absorbed by oxygen in an intense way. Now, doesn't that mean just by common sense that oxygen in our bodies, the oxygen that we breathe and depend on, would be saturated with 60 gigahertz frequencies? And doesn't that mean that our bodies will conduct like 5G antennas? Uh-huh. Furthermore, wouldn't our bodies be acting as potent antenna for 60 gigahertz frequencies? Uh, it causes us all kinds of health problems. And where would we even escape to get away from them if they saturate all major cities with this? 5G's likely ill effects, ill health effects can be divided into several categories. And that's why I keep telling people, you know, with the big city shit, get away from those cities because, man, they are just collecting you for population reduction. You think those Georgia Guidestones are a joke? <laughs> now, one thing it causes is skin problems. And a lot of people just plain don't make the connection that the skin on your body is the largest organ of your body. And an Israeli, Israeli study by Dr. Feldman on 5G frequencies found that they caused human sweat ducts to behave strangely. The study reports that human sweat ducts act as an array of very small helix-shaped antennas when exposed to millimeter waves. That implies that the human body could be even more conductive. And a study on that particularly feared 5G frequency of 60 gigahertz referenced by the Center for Public Integrity concluded that more than 90% of the transmitted MMWs or power is absorbed in the epidermis and dermis layer. It's not going to be good for the skin. Not at all. And your skin is your protective layer. Now, heart problems. A study from 1992 reported that frequencies in the higher 5G spectrum, ranging from 53 to 78 gigahertz, impacted the heart rate variability in rats. So in other words, higher spectrum 5G could probably cause heart arrhythmias in humans. And another Russian study on frogs whose skin was exposed to these millimeter waves found that they cause heart arrhythmia. Also, eye problems. In 1994, a study was carried out in Poland to determine whether or not millimeter radiation impacted the eye's transmission of light through its lens. They found that lower level millimeter wave radiation produced lens opacity in rats associated with cataracts forming. So 5G could cause human beings to develop eye problems and cataracts. And this one is difficult to find a copy of, although the academic citation for it is found in um, Chernyakov, GM, and Korochkin. Yada, 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 yada. Re reactions of biological systems of variation complexity to the action of low-level EHF radiation. That's from 1989. Kind of scary. In addition, a Japanese experiment was conducted to see whether or not the feared 60 gigahertz frequency band could cause ocular problems. And it found that millimeter wave antennas can cause thermal injuries of varying types of levels. And the thermal effects induced by millimeter waves 
can apparently penetrate below the surface of the eye. That one is also difficult to find, but they have a lovely reference here. Immune problems. In 2002, a Russian study set out to explore the effects of 42 gigahertz frequencies determined that when healthy mice were exposed to them, they had a drastic reduction of activity with cells involved with immunity, about 50%. So in other words, 42 gigahertz frequencies close to the middle of the 5G spectrum cause mice to suffer from immune system problems. And they concluded that the whole body exposure of healthy mice to low intensity EHF EMR has a profound effect on the indices of non-specified immunity. Now, a detailed, complex looking, but not impossible to understand study was published in 2010 about the same frequencies Verizon is currently deploying directly in the middle of the current Verizon 5G spectrum at 35 gigahertz. Now, the study was titled Protein Changes in Microphages Induced by Plasma from Rats Exposed to 35 Gigahertz millil Millimeter Waves. And guess what? It came from Texas-based Air Force Research Laboratories and Associated Entities. So... It's quite solid cursory evidence that 5G will cause health problems. So let's back away from the research real quick and think about this with some common sense. We're composed of water and oxygen and we breathe oxygen. Oxygen is all around us. Although it is a very small part of the atmosphere, it is still essential to us. It shouldn't take much more scientific information to suspect that frequencies known to be extremely interactive with oxygen would cause health problems in mammals or other forms of life. They bill it as being a revolution in technology, but those risks simply seem to outweigh the benefits. To me, I bill it as weaponization of your own little device that you carry with you. Now, according to Green Med Info, who published a very well-sourced article about 5G, 180 scientists and doctors have called for a moratorium on 5G, understanding it will be hazardous to human health. At this point, it doesn't look like anyone's going to stop it. Now, all we can do is write articles like this, and hand them out to whoever cares on the street. Sacramento is saturated with 5G now. And for the first three months, people can use it for free. But nothing good is ever free. So, you guys have that attention span that's shorter than a goldfish? Guess what? Ah, uh, it is not good. Not good. Oops, shit, shit, shit. I'm trying to post over here on realliberty.org and it's arguing with me. I hate when that happens. Oop, I forgot to do my little, I got to do my hashtag. Although it's not a hashtag, it's a pound sign. <laughs> I... Okay, where am I at? There am I at. Okay, you know what? It's, oh wow, it's late. I need to get to the pig. I need to see what happened this date in history. What happened today? By the way, I just kind of gave you what I think they're trying to distract you from. Because, yeah, they're rolling this shit out. They are getting desperate, whoever they are, the leeches that be. Yes. Okay. So, 
Word of the day is closet. Something that one flamboyant cousin of yours still refuses to come out of. That's apparently from the official dictionary of sarcasm. Thank you, Hambo, for that one. In the quotable quotes section, I believe that sex is one of the most beautiful, natural, wholesome things that money can buy. Thank you, Tom Clancy. Wow. Um... Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. They got jokes about golfers and stuff, and I could really give two shits less. Uh, this date in history, the 24th of October, 1861. Pigster sky eye waxes Shakespearean by bloviating. Parting is such sweet sorrow when West Virginia's we're out of here and secedes from Virginia. This date in history, the 24th of October, 1901, with nothing better to do, a wench named Annie Taylor decides to go out for a ride in a barrel over the mighty Niagara Falls and lives. You go, girlfriend. And finally, this date in history, the 24th of October, 1931, guess who's coming to dinner? Empire State denizens try to take it in stride when George Washington Bridge connecting New York to New Jersey opens. And that's why they can't have nice things. So, come on over to PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Tell them Grammy sent you and they'll run and squeal. <laughs> it's funny. You should watch it. Okay. Wow, that was fast. I really zippity doodad through my stuff tonight. Holy smokes, Batman. Uh, where do I want to go next? You know, I got all kinds of things about all the bad juju that they're doing to us. But. Mm, let's see. No, I don't want to go to InfoWars. InfoWars just pisses me off. How about we go here? How about we go to something fun, something way cool? This is from all that's interesting.com. What? And my mother is calling on my phone. I will have to call you back, sweetheart. Apparently, all that's interesting.com is not wanting to pull up. There we go. There we go. Now it is. Genetic testing reveals that the Earth's oldest civilization is the Aboriginal Australians. How cool is that? I have watched a couple of documentaries about this. And, uh, yeah, the uh, quote-unquote government doesn't like the oral history that's been coming down, that these people have been passing down, and, wow, to listen to what all they have to go through in order to get the oral history right. Dude, seriously, I'm impressed. So... For thousands of years, Aboriginal Australians have lived throughout the continent, but new evidence reveals that their existence in the continent's um, deserts date back much, much farther than previously believed. And they don't have 5G or Wi-Fi or any of that other fun stuff. Hey, wait a minute here. Did I just get... I did. I just got booted from my from my chat what the hey okay <clears throat> I'll get back in the chat here in a minute or as soon as it lets me now the oldest civil it's the oldest civilization in the world Aboriginal Australians became genetically isolated 58,000 years ago tens of thousands of years before other ancestral groups making them the world's oldest civilization and they then settled in Australia around that time so but in September of 2018 a study has extended the group's history in an interior or in the interior deserts of Western Australia by 10,000 years 
Indeed, the ancient group's connection to the interior part of the continent goes back much further than once believed, with new estimates that the group had been in the desert region for at least 50,000 years, which blows away previous estimates. Okay, my ice chat, there it is. Wow. Okay. Ice chat. Why did you completely disconnect me? That is not right. Just a minute. Let me get <coughs> reconnected. I don't know what's going on, <clears throat> but, ah, thank you, I am back, I'm back, I'm back, and reconnected, yay, um, okay, what are you guys doing, okay, so, Oop, let me double check this, because I was, nope, come on, ah, <laughs> okay, thank you, I'm already logged in as. Okay, and yeah, okay, back to my article, now that I'm back in, I don't know what the hell happened, all of a sudden, there of us, gone, so, back to this, okay, now, researchers came to this conclusion while excavating nearly 25,000 stone artifacts from the desert rock shelter of Karnat, okay, yeah, it's a desert rock shelter that I'm going to, I would sprain my tongue trying to say the name. Car, I'm going to try it anyway. Karnatuku. Karnatuku. I'm sure Mary B's going to laugh her ass off when she hears this. <laughs> Go for it, girlfriend. Laugh your ass off at me. Leaving someone else alone. Now, the objects spanned different uses and purposes as well as timelines. And one particularly interesting discovery was that of an early microlith, which is a pointed tool with one sharp edge blunted. Okay. And the tool could have been used as a spear or as an apparatus for processing wood. And it proves that early desert peoples were innovative with their technology. The tool also appears rather sophisticated, which suggests that the Aborigines were not only skilled, but also adaptable to their environment as they spread across the continent and encountered widely different ecosystems as they did so. Now, the tool is believed to be about 43,000 years old which is more than 15,000 years older than other examples of similar items. And it's believed then that the aboriginals settled in the desert shortly after they first arrived in the northern part of the continent. So, thus the study shows that the aboriginals were not only the first people to live in the deserts of Australia, but were the first to live in deserts anywhere in the entire world. And their rich history starts way before they called the deserts home. Now, a brief history of human migration is of all the world's modern populations. They can be traced back to one single out of Africa migration roughly 72,000 years ago. That's according to a 2016 study. And among this group of ancient ancestors, the aboriginals were the first to become genetically isolated making them the world's oldest civilization. They became distinct in the genetic record approximately 58,000 years ago, while European and Asian ancestral groups became genetically isolated roughly 16,000 years later. Now, a group of uh, Papuan and Aboriginal ancestors who left Africa at the time 
were most likely the first group of people to ever cross an ocean when they made their way to Sahul, which is the supercontinent made up of modern-day Tasmania, Australia, and New Guinea, which existed at the time of their migration. That's if you believe all of the yada yada history that we've been fed. Now, the Aboriginal Australians and Papuans, when separated from one another around 37,000 years ago, um, why did they, or why they did so is not clear as the uh, land masses of Australia and New Guinea were not completely separated from each other geographically at that point. So, uh, the Aboriginal have quite a genetic diversity. Research estimates that around 31,000 years ago, Aboriginal and Australians then began to come, become genetically distinct from each other. And the genetic diversity among Aboriginal Australians is amazing. This is according to the, um, the researcher who is behind the 2016 study and an assistant professor at the University of Copenhagen and Bern. Now, because the continent has been populated for such a long time, we find that groups of southwestern Australia are genetically more different from southeastern Australia than, for example, Native Americans are from Siberians, which that is pretty cool. Aboriginal civilizations have lived in Australia for so long that each group of people in the continent's different areas have adapted to that region's weather in unique ways. And that's because Australia's terrain is vast. As Aboriginals traversed the continent, some groups stayed in certain areas and others continued to explore. But eventually, these groups became geographically isolated from one another and subsequently became genetically distinct from one another. Hmm, now I have a little... I have an idea percolating in the back of my head now. Now, population estimates for the Aboriginal Australians vary greatly. Some estimates place the number around 300,000, while others say that their total population exceeds a million. And at the time of European settlement in Australia, around 250 years ago, more than 200 different Aboriginal languages existed, as well as hundreds of dialects which were, which were spoken across the continent's different tribes. And the languages and dialects, like biological adaption, adaptations, vary throughout the geographical distribution of the different tribes, and most of the peoples are bilingual or multilingual. So Hansel, just because they're aboriginals doesn't mean they're idiots. Because if they can be multilingual, they're, they're above what I am. I have trouble with English. Now, despite the extremely long history of the aboriginals in Australia, the most common language spoken today is relatively young. Language experts believe that the... Uh, Language which is spoken by 90% of Australia's Aborigines is only 4,000 years old. This conundrum has long perplexed researchers, but one possible reason for the disparity is that there was a second mass migration of people speaking this language into the continent, which occurred around 4,000 years ago. However, the authors of the 2016 study believed that a ghost-like group of internal Aborigines who swept across the continent around that time were responsible for the linguistic and cultural linking of Australia's indigenous people. So Australia's Aborigines are one of the most diverse and mysterious civilizations in the world. And they are the Earth's most ancient culture and make up an important piece of Australian and human history. And you know what? That got me to thinking. You know, all of these leeches that be the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Zionists, whoever you wish to throw out there of those big names of the elite brokers that are out there, those that are the string pullers. Um, you know, it's kind of... It makes me wonder if maybe they aren't just as um, 
I don't know, separate from the rest of humanity because of their inbreeding and selective breeding and all that other fun stuff. Maybe they really are. They pro I'm sure they're not as old as the Aborigines, but they're probably just as diverse as the as uh, from the rest of. Yep. Oh, you were blaming my mom on the disconnect? Oh. <laughs> yes, I will call her back as soon as as soon as I get done here. And mom, she's probably going to go, oh man, and I knew that you do radio on Wednesdays and she's going to berate herself and I'm going to say, mom, stop that. That's my job. <laughs> she's such a goofy mom. I love her. Crazy old lady. Okay. Oh, Grimmy just shared something over here in uh, from the Gateway Pundit over here on realliberty.org. I'm going to... Okay, it's... Oh, shit. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. Just one of those lovely little distractions. Apparently from the gatewaypundit.com, bomb disposal officers said today's pipe bombs appear to be hoax devices. So why was reporter allowed near a live bomb? Hmm. So the Secret Service announced that suspicious packages were sent to Dangleberry, Shitlery, George Soros, former AG Eric Holden, his own, uh, Representative Maxine Waters, and they were all sent as mail bombs. The return address on the suspicious packages sent to them belonged to Representative Debbie Washerman Schultz. Debbie does Democrats. She's going to fuck you up. Now, one of the bombs appeared to have an ISIS flag taped on it. And former do bomb disposal officer Tom Sauer posted a thread on Twitter today discussing the incidents. Number one, proper bi bom pipe bombs don't have wires connected to both ends. That's dumb. Okay. And um, number two, you can find timers, remote control receivers way smaller than what that white box is. And a proper timer would be stored inside the pipe, making it fully encapsulated. That thing is just silly looking. Number three, bottom line, whoever made that wanted it to be painfully obvious to anyone and everyone that it's a bomb. This is nearly the same as a bundle of road flares uh, wrapped together with an old-timey alarm clock ticking away. Number four, hoax devices are far more common than real ones. In which case, they sh we should ask ourselves what the motives of the bomber are and who benefits. So go ahead and think about that one. Just a moment or two. Yeah. So. Um, also, the photo doesn't appear to be taken by a bomb tech or a crime scene investigator. Bad angle, poor lighting, etc. So, if it's being taken by a journalist, why would they let them near a live pipe bomb? Excellent question. Excellent question. I would like to know that myself. Thank you, Grimmy, for sharing that. Wow, I am almost at the end of my time. So, let me see, where was I at with, nope, that one. Copy this one. See, that's what happens. I get distracted. Squirrel! <laughs> and man, I am just really good at finding the long-ass links tonight. Holy crap, Benoli. And Mary B, I see you over here. Okay, so, da, 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 da. and you know what? I probably ought to remind everybody of what shows are coming up. Now, um, I'll just go to my schedule. 
how about I do that? Seeing as how Flasher gave me so much shit about not having my schedule up that, yeah. So on uh, Wednesday nights is me, which is tonight. Now tomorrow, actually, and the Ocelli effect is on later on Channel 14. And tomorrow evening, we also have the Ocelli effect at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Channel 14. But also, the Rock and Renegade with Art Underground is at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So thanks, Art. Be sure to check that out this week. I will be back on Freaker Friday for the Freaker Friday edition and another Halloween-themed kind of get you primed and ready for the show kind of song to start things off. Um, on Friday. Also, at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, the Ponder Gander with Vinny on RLM Radio. Is he still doing that, or is he still away for a while? He's showing on the schedule, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Also, well, the Ocelli Effect is on Monday through Friday. So, just to let you know, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yep. And on Channel 14. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, on Saturday, the Dork Table, which is a roundtable discussion, and this weekend it'll probably be Flash talking to himself, and God knows who else he'll be able to wrangle into it. And, oh yeah, Freaker's Ball, Friday night. Yeah, don't spaz that off. Friday night, Freaker's Ball, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeehaw, good time will be had by all, and they stay up way late. Way late, like way later than I do, especially since I got to work Saturday, so I can't stay up that late. But let's see what's going on in the chat real quick. Uh, dun, dun. Assumptions are fun. Yeah, they can be. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, okay. Okay, okie dokies. Yay! Oh. Oh, thank you, Grimmy. Vinny is on the schedule even though he's on high eight us. High eight us. Who's high? <laughs> Do I need to ask? Rob's fired up the bubbler already. And Poxified is... Ooh, Poxify wants some dirty love. Oh, baby. <laughs> You freaky deaky poxified. Okay. Uh, I still have a few minutes. So let me see what else I can find. You know what? What is this? Oh. Yeah. I saw this one on Twitter earlier today. It's from National Geographic. Apparently, there was a quake that split a tectonic plate in two. And uh, it's an intense trembler in Mexico. It was just the latest example of the enigmatic type of earthquake with highly destructive potential. Now, this was published October 24th of 2018, but the sep it, it was on September 7th of 2017 that a magnitude 8.2 earthquake struck southern Mexico, killing dozens and injuring hundreds. Now, I wonder if that's anywhere remotely close to where that quote-unquote caravan of all of these bad people are coming to invade us. Pay attention. Look over there. And yes, I am going to admit that sometimes this stuff, you know, although it is a distraction from what they're really doing out there, it, it's still not something that you need to ignore either. So give it some attention. You know, acknowledge that it's there. Know that something's going on. But good God, stop focusing on it. Okay? That's really ridiculous. So, apparently, in any case, back to this quake. Um, apparently, part of a roughly 37-mile thick tectonic plate responsible for the quake completely split apart. That was revealed by a new study in Nature Geoscience. And uh, it took place in a matter of 10 seconds. So the next time we think that we can dink with Mother Nature, you know, with doing the chemtrailing or, you know, whatever else that they're doing, when we start dodging with frequencies and microwaves and all of this other fun stuff, Mother Nature can, in the blink of an eye, eradicate us 
we really need to stop this whole play in God shit. Because although we are in control of, you know, our environment and every choice that we make has consequences or repercussions or rewards, however you wish to look at it, um, you really, really, really need to... Yes, Grimmy, I am easily distracted. <laughs> I just saw that. Um, we need to stop and realize that, yeah... What we do here is only temporary. Mother Nature will survive. She will carry on without us. And uh, whatever you do, some people might remember it, but for the most part, in a hundred years, will you really be that memorable? You're memorable now. Make your nows good. And you know, if you want the world to be a better place, be a better example. Thank you all for listening in to the Rocket Chair this evening on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. And tomorrow I will be working, so I don't think I'll be online, or if I am, not much. And uh, I will catch up with you later in the funny papers. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all. Enough. Good night.